Yes, as we were. Thank you very much, worship team. We may have our seats, our blessed seats. I believe we are blessed. Ama kuna mtu hajabarikiwa bado. Tuneza funga tu ibada. Tuende. Because we've already been blessed. Amen. I thank God for this day. Worship team ni kama walikuwa me, wameangalia notes zangu. Because everything they sang to the glory of God was part of what we are going to share today. So I believe we are all in the same spirit looking at the greatness of God. And we are looking at two, two main scriptures. Can we have Isaiah 41, verse 14? Isaiah 41, 14. Yes, as it is there, let me introduce myself. I don't want to assume that everyone knows me. That is the memory verse for Deliverance Church this year. So you can familiarize yourself with it in case you are a visitor. <coughs> Helen Mukasa is my name. I'm born again. I'm a daughter in this house. I'm married to one man. And I'm a mother of five. Uh, four girls and one boy. I think two of them are in here today. One of them could be either up there or, or in the Sunday school. And the other one is seated right there. Just rise up. Yeah, that is the last born of the house. And I was just thinking, she was born on 5th of April, several years back. And this year, see na stress at birthday yake atenda wapi. 5th of April. Already kunaka outing kameji later. If you know, you know. Born as if you sana. Amen. God is great. We call him Yahweh and we sang that song. We call him wonderful father. We call him father in heaven. We call, we call him glorious one. We call him Abba father. We call him Elohim, the creator. We call him Adonai, the master. We call him El Shaddai, God almighty. We call him Nisi, the Lord, our banner. We call him Sidkenu, our righteousness. We call him Rafa, our healer. We call him El Heneaman, our faithful God. We call him Rohi, God who sees me. We call him El Sali, my strength, my rock. We call him El Rachum, merciful God. We call him Emmanuel, God with us. Shalom, the Lord is peace. And the list goes on and on and on. Looking at our scripture, Fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, says the Lord and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. We are told to fear not because the Lord is there to help us. Then I want us to go to Psalms chapter 23, and before we read it, there's a, there was a poet. He was very good in poetry, and in any congregation, he would dare anyone to give him any poem, and he would bring it out in a very poetic way. So one time they are in a sitting, and he asks for someone to give him any poem, whether known or unknown, then he'll recite it in a poetic way because that was his speciality. So one of the priests that was in the congregation gave him Psalms 23. Shall we have it, Psalms 23? Can we read it together? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. That was Psalms 23. 
So this poet, when he was given Psalms 23, he read it so well, such that when he finished, he was given a standing ovation and the congregation was clapping and celebrating. Then the priest came up and read the same psalm. And by the time the priest was through with reading the psalm, everyone was in tears. Why? The poet did it out of knowledge. The preacher did it out of revelation. So when we read the word, do we read it like we are reading some poetry, like we are reading some storybook, like we are reading some newspaper, or do we internalize the word of God to get the revelation out of it? So when we look at God, I just started by reading a few names by which we call our Heavenly Father. He's the creator of heaven and earth. So when you say the Lord, do you just say the Lord or do you think who this Lord is? Someone who created heaven and earth and filled it. That man is my shepherd. The Lord, the creator, is my shepherd. We call him the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For Abraham, Abraham saw him in old age when the Lord opened the womb of Sarah and Sarah conceived at an old age. Same case applied, applies to Rebekah, the wife of Isaac, whose womb was closed and the Lord opened his womb, her womb. Hannah, the mother of Samuel, the Lord also opened her womb. Samson's mother was also barren and the Lord opened her womb and she got Samson. This God who created heaven and earth, this God who opens the wombs of barren women, the Lord is my, the Lord is my, this same God instructs Noah to build an ark and all animals go in. You can imagine a place that has an elephant and a giraffe and a rabbit and a rat and a mosquito and it rains and it floats up and it does not sink through the instructions of God. God gave the specifics. This God is my shepherd. We say he is a God who is mighty in battle. And I'd like us to look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 49. Goliath has dared that who can kill me? I'm the mightiest. I've been fighting ever since I was a child. His size in itself is very intimidating. 1 Samuel 17, verse 49. 1 Samuel 17, 49. But this young boy, David, dares to take on to this giant Goliath. David has no experience of war. He just has experience of looking after his father's sheep. Then what does he do? David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead, so that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell. Please take note, he fell on his face. Where did the stone hit? The forehead. How did he fall? Forward. Is it the stone that killed him? As the stone was hitting his forehead, some other force was pushing him from behind. This Lord is my shepherd. The God of Moses, when Pharaoh hardened his heart, this Lord brought plagues. He started with water turning into blood, then frogs, then lice, then flies, then the livestock fell sick, then boils, everyone was with boils, then followed with thunder and hailstone, followed by locusts, followed by darkness for three days, 
followed by the death of firstborns. And to go through that again, imagine it is happening in Zimmerman. You open your tap, and instead of water coming out, blood. Then the next thing frogs all over. Zimmerman tuna complain nini? Cockroaches na panya. Now imagine frogs all over, ata tukiketi yapa church zinakuja, then lice, then flies, then all the livestock fall sick, then everyone has boils, you can imagine. You can't walk, you can't sit, you can't come to church, because we are all boiling. <laughs> then thunder and hailstone, then locusts, then darkness for three consecutive days, then the death of firstborns. That's what the Lord did because Pharaoh hardened his heart and refused to release the children of Israel. This God is my shepherd. I'm reminded of uh, a time I had a certain preacher saying, in Nigeria, the days of Benson Idahosa, the president announced that from today, Nigeria is a Muslim state. And Benson Idahosa took the phone and called the president and told him, Your Excellency, I've heard that you have announced that from today, Nigeria is a Muslim state. Before my wrath gets you, I want you to reverse that statement. My wrath, not the Lord's wrath, my wrath. Before my wrath gets you, I want you to reverse that statement. And the president imagined, if his wrath can get me, how about when he calls upon the wrath of the Lord? And the statement was reversed. This Lord is my shepherd. We call him a consuming fire. In First Kings chapter 18, we see Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And... Elijah is calling them into a con contest. And he says, if God is God, serve him. If Baal is God, serve him. But now this is what I want you to do, so that we, we know which God is the real God. And he says, bring your sacrifice, put it on an altar, call your God to bring fire. And they pray the whole day and nothing happens. And Elijah puts his sacrifice and he pours water on it, and he calls on the God of heaven, and the sacrifice is consumed, plus the altar, plus the stones, a consuming fire. <coughs> this God is my shepherd. Moses and Aaron, Leviticus chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Let's have it. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of meeting and came out and blessed the people. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. This God, who is a consuming fire, is my shepherd. We see him commanding the seas in Exodus chapter 14 when the children of Israel were between as they say, a rock and a hard place. The Red Sea is ahead. Pharaoh and his team are behind and they have nowhere to go to. And the Lord parts the water and they pass through dry land. This Lord who can command the waters to stand still and immediately dry the seabed. This Lord is my shepherd. Joshua chapter 3, crossing River Jordan, when they had gone to get the Ark of the Covenant. And they were told that immediately those who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant step into the water. The waters will part. And that's exactly what happened. And the children of Israel, for a second time, now under the leadership of Joshua, pass on dry land. I want us to look at Elijah. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 5, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, Elijah also divided the Jordan when he was just about to be taken away. 
2 Kings chapter 2, verse 5. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went. And fifty men of the sons of, of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up and struck the water and it was divided this way and that so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Just by taking his mantle and hitting the water, you know, we are told that the sons of the prophets were there. They are wondering now, these people, Wanenda Wapi, and how will they cross? Tell me where you can just take a piece of cloth and strike water and pass. If such a prophet comes to Zimmerman, Navile to Guapa, people will go for that mantra. But Elijah does it and they cross on dry land. Now, Elijah, as, as they go on, let, let's move on to the same Second Kings chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. The, Elijah and Elisha have crossed to the other side, and Elijah has been taken by a chariot of fire. Now, Elisha is here remaining, and he's wondering, now, nimebaki na mantra, but how will I cross to the other side? If it were you, would you go confidently, you say, my mantra ilifanya kazi, itafanya tena. There would be some fear within you. Second Kings 2.13, he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. I'm sure at that time, standing at the bank, roho ilikuwa inadunda kweli kweli. He's wondering if the same miracle will happen. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. This God who can give you a mantle and you hit water with it and it divides and you pass through, this Lord is... The Lord is my provider. We see in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, the widow of Zarephath, and she had very little, and the prophet comes and asks her, what do you have? And she says, this is what I have. I'm waiting to eat it with my son and die. And the man of God says, make something for me that we may eat. And the woman obediently makes something for the prophet. And the Bible records that the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. These people who were waiting to eat their last meal and die, the Lord multiplied what they had, and the little that they had never ran dry because of obedience. This God who can multiply nothing to something is my shepherd. Now, Elijah has exited. Elisha is now in the scene, and he meets another widow. And this widow tells him that my creditors, uh, the creditors of my late husband have come to take my sons to make them slaves because I am unable to pay. And what does Elijah do? Elisha, sorry. He tells, her, he tells her to go and look for jars of oil because all she had in her store was a little oil. And she's told to go and look for more jars. And she's wondering, natafuta mitungi na mafuta ni hitu. But in obedience, she goes and gets jars. And let's look at 2 Kings 4.7, 2 Kings 4.7. 
what happens at the end of it all when she obeys what the prophet of God tells her. Then she came and told the man of God that she had filled all the, all the jars. And the man of God tells him, go, sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. She got more than enough. She got more than enough in that she was able to pay the debts. The sons would not, now not be taken to be slaves. And what remained was enough to sustain her and her sons. This God who multiplies supernaturally, he is my shepherd. In 2 Kings 4 verse 42, we see a hundred men fed with 20 loaves of bread. 2 Kings 4, 42 to 44. Then a man came from Baal, Shalisha, and brought the man of God bread of fast fruits, 20 loaves of barley bread, newly ripened, ripened grain in his knapsack, and he said, give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, what? Shall I set this before 100 men? He said again, give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. A hundred people, 20 loaves of bread, and they are fed and there are left overs. This Lord is my provider. If he provided for that lady, at the widow at Zarephath, if he provided for the other lady whose sons were about to be taken because of her debt, if he provided 20 loaves of bread and it filled 100 men, this Lord is my provider. The Lord is my shepherd. Whatever you are going through today, rest assured that your shepherd is concerned about you. And if you call upon him and obey, you will see the goodness of his love. The Lord is my healer. In the books of 2 Kings chapter 5, we see a man called Naaman. And he is told, go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. Now, this same Jordan that water parted is the same water that is being used to heal a man. All he needed was obedience to dip himself seven times. This Lord who healed Naaman, without going to any doctor, he is my shepherd. In the books of Numbers, chapter 21, the children of Israel are speaking evil against Moses. And they are speaking evil against God. And God got annoyed and sent serpents to go and bite them. And a good number of them died. But what does the Bible tell us in Numbers 21 verse 9? God tells Moses to make a bronze serpent and hang it somewhere. So, you just look at the serpent and you are healed. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Where on earth does that happen? At Ukishikwa na malaria, Pastor Kibera aende atengeneze sanamu ya mbu, akuja. Ukishikwa na malaria, all you need to do is to come and look at it and you receive your healing. That God, that miracle working God, who heals supernaturally, just by looking at a bronze serpent, when you are bitten by a serpent, you receive your healing. That God is my shepherd. Can we say it again? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Is it healing? Is it children? Is it food? Is it provision? We have seen documentary evidence. The Lord has done it before. He can do it again because he is my And us to look a little bit at the New Testament. There's a 
Jesus was walking and he finds a paralytic man by the pool and he heals that man. He just asks him, what do you want? And the man starts giving a story, you know, I have no man. And miraculously, the Lord just heals him. The blind man at Bethsaida, Jesus spat on his eyes and he received his healing. I wonder how many would agree to that today. Blind Bartimaeus just calls on the Lord. He receives his healing. There's another blind man in the book of John chapter 9. When, when he is brought to Jesus, Jesus makes, mixes saliva and mud and smears on his face. And he receives his healing. The woman with an issue of blood, the centurion's servant, Jairus' daughter who was raised from the dead, Lazarus who was raised from the dead. Then there's a paralytic man who was let down from the roof in Matthew chapter 9. The place is so full, but these people say who, who mgonjwa hatu rudi na ye leo. Na wanamteremusha from the roof and he receives his healing. The man with the withered hand in Matthew chapter 12. The widow of Nain whose son was restored back to life. Jesus met them when they were on their way going to, for the, going to bury the young man. And Jesus stops the procession and heals the young man. In Matthew 7, Jesus calms the storms. Jesus with us an unproductive fig tree that, ha that was leafy and did not have any fruit. Jesus cleanses ten lepers. Jesus heals a woman who was crippled for 18 years, bent for 18 years. She receives instant healing. healing. Feed, feeding program number one, Jesus heals 5,000. I mean, Jesus feeds 5,000 men and they eat and they are leftovers. Feeding program number two, Jesus feeds 4,000 men, women and children aside. Then at the end of it all, when he is about to be crucified, and one of his disciples cuts off the ear of one of them, and Jesus puts it back. This Lord is my shepherd. Let's say it again. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now that he's the shepherd, who am I? Who am I? Okay, who are you? Me, I'm a sheep. You, who are you? <laughs> now let's look at the sheep. We have looked at the shepherd and we are 100% confident that the shepherd has no issue. When we call on him, he will answer. When we look at him, he will receive our cries and he will respond to us. But how about us? And we are looking at the characteristics of a sheep. Number one, sheep are not fighters. Lions are born to fight. Sheep are not fighters. Izo zinakuanga tu hapo zikule, zisikie vizuri, zichungwe. So for us, sheep, we should depend on the Lord. We have no strength of our own. We are sheep. We are not there to fight. We are there to call upon the Lord to fight for us. That's why the children of Israel in Exodus 14, they were told, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. They were not told to fight back. They were not told to go back and fight Pharaoh. They were told to stand still. We as sheep, let us draw our strength from the Lord. Sheep believe in flocking. When they are together, they feel safe. And when the shepherd is there, they feel safer because they know they have protection. One thing our mom likes saying is that when you are weak, you are weak. When you are weak, you are weak. So sheep, the one that goes astray, ndiyo unakutanga imeibiwa, imeumia. So let us embrace what? Fellowship. If you are a true sheep, you will like being with the flock. You will not run away from the flock. As believers, we should draw our strength from the Holy Spirit and from one another. Sheep cannot clean themselves. They depend on the shepherd to clean them. Ukiangalia paka, paka aneza kajilamba, 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 kaoga, mwilimzima. 
But sheep cannot do that. They depend on the shepherd to clean them. And we depend on the blood of Jesus for us to be clean. Because we are sheep, we cannot cleanse ourselves. Sheep cannot fend for themselves. They cannot drink running water. They depend on the shepherd to take them to the pasture and to give them water. That's why the psalmist is talking of green pastures and still waters, not moving waters. Sheep will take still waters. So we should depend on our shepherd to take care of us. Sheep are prone to wander. Sheep graze looking down. And the more they look down, they lose focus of the shepherd. And at that point, they can wander off from the fold. As a believer, when you are blessed and you concentrate on the blessing and not the blesser, you are likely to lose track and fall away from the ways of God. Sheep cannot sleep when hungry or uncomfortable. When a sheep is hungry, it will keep on bleating. When it is uncomfortable, it will keep on bleating until it is comfortable. So to make a sheep lie down peacefully, it means that shepherd is very good. He has made sure the sheep are clean. He has made sure the sheep are full and they are comfortable. The Lord is my shepherd. That's why I can sleep peacefully and I can be at peace because I've been properly fed and properly taken care of. Sheep, has an, sheep have an excellent sense of smell and hearing. So they can know there's a predator from a very far distance. If you do, cannot detect a predator as a sheep, just know you are not a real sheep. We need to check. They have a very strong sense of smell and have very sharp ears to hear, even from a very far distance. That's why sheep cannot sleep where there is noise. They are very sensitive to noise. If all sheep were sensitive, if all sheep were sensitive, then we would not have predators that take sheep the way we have seen. A predator in the name of a prophet will come and tell you, enda uze vitu zako zote, unilete hiyo pesa, alafu muingie hapa, mufunge, mpaka mukufe na mutaenda mbinguni. That's a sheep that has not listened very carefully to the voice of the shepherd. Only a sheep that does not know the voice of a shepherd will listen to a strange voice and follow. Tinyi mukisha funga mukufe, mi nakula because mimi nitakuja mwisho. I'll be the last one to come. That's why I'm eating. But you, you must go first. If you are a true sheep that has kept in the fold, you will not listen to a false prophet that comes and tells you this is what the shepherd has said. Thank God for the priest of the house who has never told us anything because he listens directly from the shepherd. Sheep are sensitive to taste. They don't just eat anything. When you get them to the best grass, that's what they will eat. When you take them to the best pasture, that's what they will eat. So if you are not a true sheep and a, tr a sheep that is sensitive to what you should eat, you'll find yourself eating anything that will affect you. A healthy sheep has a strong appetite. Strong appetite. So if you want to be healthy, your appetite, your appetite should be very strong. Is you any Sunday pekeake? Even if Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day. If you don't have a strong appetite, then something is wrong with you as a sheep. So let's, if kama appetite yako ikochini, try and be with the flock and your appetite will increase. As you see them eat, your appetite will also increase. Now, a shepherd's tool. A shepherd uses a rod and a staff. 
A rod is to defend the sheep from attacks, and a staff is for guiding and protecting the flock from bad situation, e.g. straying or falling. So when danger comes, the shepherd will use the rod to wed off the predator that wants to feed on the sheep. So anyone who does not use the rod and staff, we are told to resist the devil and he will flee from you. The rod and the staff should always be near you. A staff is for guiding them, the sheep that may go astray. The shepherd will use the staff to bring them up. In case maybe there is a sheep that has fallen into a ditch because the staff is curved, the shepherd will use it to pull back the sheep. It may not be very nice. Sometimes the staff may hurt you. It may penetrate where you feel a little bit hurt. Umekanyagwa kidogo. But it's for your own good. It's for rebuking and correcting and edifying. So whenever the staff is used on you, just know that it's for, it's for your own good. It's also used to examine the skin of a sheep. You know, the staff, the, something could be hit, hidden under the skin. So when you use the staff to remove the wool and see the direct skin of the sheep. That is the work of the staff. And the shepherd will know there is something that is hidden under the wool that is disturbing the sheep. It could be an injury. It would be a skin disease. It could be some ticks. So even as we sit here, maybe even as we are smiling, the staff kuna vitu zenyatuoni, and the shepherd will decide this one inatakana apeleke kwa deep aoshwe, this one inaitaji dawa ya kupakwa ama maji ya kuosha. The shepherd will know what treatment to give the sheep. So as we sit here covered with our wool. It's only the staff that can reveal what is happening and cannot be seen. So allow the staff to be used on you to reveal what cannot be seen by the naked eye. If the leg of a sheep is broken, the shepherd will see. But anything that is beyond the wool that is on the skin, the shepherd will need the staff to see it and then determine what kind of treatment they need. Now, because we are human beings and we are sheep, we know, you know and I know, in this area, I need some help. It may not be seen, you could be smiling, you could be very smart in your yellow ushering attire, but inside, there is something that only the staff can reveal, and you know it, and you need prayers. Don't feel shy. Just come and the Lord will minister to you. In conclusion, I want us to get Psalms chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. That great God who can minister to the waters, that great God who can open barren wombs, that great God who can multiply some very little food, why is he so interested in me? Psalm 834. Psalm 834. Psalms chapter 8. Sorry, not 34, 3 and 4. Yes, that's where we are. Psalm 8, 3 and 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Who am I that that mighty God can be interested in me. Who am I that that great God can offer to be my shepherd? When he wakes up, I am his assignment. When I wake up, I'm just there knowing the shepherd will come and take care of me. This great God, what is it in me that causes him to be so much concerned about me and the answer is in john chapter 3 verse 16 for god 
so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That mystery, that mystery of that great God coming to feed a sheep like me, a worm like me, that mystery is in John 3.16. It's the mystery of love. Shall we rise up? And just look at your life. I'll request the ministry team to come forward. Our time is up. But you could be that sheep who listened to a strange voice. Or you could be that sheep that, that has not listened to the voice of the shepherd. You could be that sheep that has gone astray, that has listened to a strange voice, that has listened to a strange gospel. You could be that sheep. And you feel you need to come back to the flock. And you are making an appointment with yourself and you are making a commitment with yourself. Just come to the front and this team will minister to you that you may come back to the fold, that the Lord may be your real shepherd and you may be that real sheep that listens and hears the voice of the Lord. May God bless you richly.